Hey guys, welcome back to Cummins Repower Garage. I'm Steve Sanders here again with Brittany Barella. In this video, we're gonna to talk to you about your vehicle selection criteria uh, that you should consider before you put an R2.8 uh, crate engine under the hood of your vehicle. So one of the first things people ask us is, is this a 50 state legal crate engine? And the answer is not yet. We have applied uh, with California to get that carb EO, uh, but until we do, we ask that you follow the links on the bottom of CumminsRepower.com for your local uh, emissions regulating agency. Consult with them, take the information that we provide, ask them uh, to make sure that you can still register your vehicle after you do a swap. Um, generally speaking, we're saying model your 1999 and older because we've tested tailpipe emissions to this to be as clean as tier one light duty emissions at a test weight of 4,000 pounds. So you may have seen our black uh, Jeep TJ that's uh, the vehicle that we did a lot of our emissions testing in before we put it into some other vehicles. Uh, so that, that's number one. Make sure that you can legally do this swap and have a vehicle that you can register after you do the swap. Once you've selected your vehicle, the next thing you want to consider is your transmission. So the engine uh, gets delivered to your house with a flywheel and a flywheel housing, which means it's set up for a manual. Then it's up to you to decide if you want to run the manual or the automatic that came in your vehicle or you want to take those out and do a transmission swap at the same time as you're doing your engine swap. If you are going to change anything about the engine or adapt to a transmission, make sure you're using a reputable uh, SEMA member at when you're purchasing parts in the aftermarket. Uh, the other part you want to take into account when selecting transmission or really any kind of vehicle component is the input power and torque that this engine is capable of. So it's 161 horsepower, 267 foot-pounds, which means it's more than likely that it's got a little bit more power or more torque especially than whatever engine came in your older vehicle. So definitely take that into consideration and make sure everything is fully capable and you don't want to kind of be using this engine swap as a way to, to break other parts of your vehicle. So you want to beef everything up at the same time if necessary. Yeah, those aging parts, if you're buying a used transmission or trying to reuse something that was already there, might not always still be capable of their original uh, manufactured rating. So if, if you've got 200,000 miles on your transmission and it's a transmission you want to use, you might look at doing a refresh or a rebuild on that at the same time. So also on CumminsRepower.com, we have this little handy gear ratio calculator. So once you verify that all the components in your driveline are what you want to run, uh, the last thing to check is, uh, are your axle gears and is that transmission overdrive ratio exactly where you want it to be? Um, this is a diesel torque curve, so it's different than the gas engine that came out. You can get away with a lot uh, different gearing on this. Um, you know, cruising speeds on the interstate around 1600 to 1800 RPMs if you're really wanting that good fuel economy. If you want to land it around 2400 and you want it really peppy and responsive, uh, you can do that too. But that tool lets you pick tire size, your transmission gears, um, and your axle ratio. and let, lets you see on this tachometer and speedometer uh, where you end up uh, between efficiency and kind of sportiness or peppiness, uh, if you will. So the last thing you want to consider when choosing your vehicle is that this turbo diesel does need a charge air cooler, which means not only does the engine have to fit in your engine compartment, but you are going to need a full cooling package up front, as well as somewhere for that air to go once it gets through your charge air cooler and your radiator. So just kind of overall size of your engine compartment, again, is going to be kind of your last main consideration when choosing your vehicle.